Uragun is a sad and happy tale. Released into early access in April of 2022, Uragun is a top-down twin-stick shooter developed by cool 2 play Take control of a friendly but deadly mech unit, face endless hordes of corrupted machines, gear up, and improvise your way out of trouble. Each level is a tightly designed challenge created to test your skills and push you to master every aspect of its deep combat system. Not everything is decided on the battlefield, however. As you progress through the campaign, you'll unlock many weapons, modifications, and attacks that will allow for a great degree of loadout customization. Experiment with all the possibilities, find your favorite style, and become the ultimate weapon against the AI. The hook that kept me playing Oregon for its length is customization. Not just weapons, but acquiring new abilities for the mech. There's a dash that leaves behind a fire trail, a shield is equipped after taking damage, or deflecting small arms when dashing. Customization options complement each other and cater to a player's style. I myself have an aggressive playstyle, so having short boosts with a fire trail equipped helped me light up the battleground like a Tuesday night. The player can equip two weapons and two sub-weapons. The main weapon includes a minigun, rocket launcher, a shotgun, and, everyone's favorite, a saw blade launcher. The sub-weapons supplement playstyles and weapon choices. These include a grenade, an energy discharge, a hammer jump, and a sword. The game lets the player experiment with different combinations. I started out with the chain gun rocket launcher combination for maximum destruction early on. But as I unlocked new weapons, I went for the fully destructive route, leave no prisoners option, which is that of a shotgun and a rocket launcher. The player can also find tokens which act as upgrade currency. Main weapons can be upgraded to increase damage, range, magazine size, or reduce reload times. Getting the right combination makes the mech feel like a ton of twisted steel and sex appeal. The game itself is a linear experience. The player will complete stages which lead to the next. Completing stages unlock weapons, sub-weapons, and abilities. The main objective is to find the mech's pilot. In order to do this, towers need to be destroyed which will allow the player to access to different countries. Each country has their own aesthetic. Barcelona is completely ruined and turned into an apocalyptic desert. China has a cyberpunk feel. Fights are always on top of skyscrapers with neon signs polluting the city. The last country in this early access version is Canada. Snowy and frozen over, no surprise there. It also has a nice mountain range feel and makes me wish they implemented some robo moose enemies, maybe even some black bears. I don't know if those are native to Canada, so don't at me in the comments. The visuals and audio are pretty standard. Each country has their own theme that plays with very little variance in between. It's all pretty standard here. The visuals add life to the world and the music fits the occasion, but I'm not going to put any of this soundtrack on my radio when I'm running chores in my car. Lighting looks good and the sound effects are chunky and impactful. The chain gun makes me feel like I'm absolutely making scrap out of these robotic enemies. The one part that feels lacking is the pre-mission screen. There's no music playing and the icons all look really bland. I don't know, feels empty and when I should be getting hyped to be dispatching to fight some rogue robots on top of some skyscrapers in China, just doesn't get me really hyped for that. Don't let that deter you from picking this fun, fast paced and sleek twin shooter up. Although I do want to make note of something extremely important before purchasing. As of July 12, 2022, the direction Oregon was taking has changed. Originally planned to be a linear top-down shooter, the dev team has decided to change the genre. Oregon did not receive the sales or attention the team was hoping for on release. They realized that if they continued in this direction, that their hard work would be for naught. They were still proud of their hard work and decided to turn Oregon into an action roguelite. New changes would include permadeath, randomized weapon, randomized world map, permanent progression, and rebuilt upgrade system. As of right now, you can pick up Oregon on Steam for $14.99 US dollars. I recommend this game already in its current state, it's a lot of fun, and I hope to see the dev team achieve their dream of turning Oregon into a roguelite. I feel like it would still be extremely successful in its roguelite format. But that's pretty much my quick review of Oregon. Thank you again for the publisher and developers for giving me access to a review key. Thank you again, faithful viewer, for sticking around until the end. I hope you found this review on Uragon helpful, and if so, consider leaving a like. 
This will help circulate this video to a higher population and find those who are looking to play new indie games in early access, in turn helping the devs. Consider subscribing if you want more retro and indie games, and I'll always be showcasing off the newest releases and always doing no damage runs of all retro and indie games. Thank you again for your viewage, and have a super day.